Hello friends. In this video, we will be discussing about plant tissue culture variants. As we already know that plant tissue culture is a technique which is used for taking a small part of the plant which is called as explant and then growing it into different ways either in artificial seeds or in terms of new plants or it can be used for producing some secondary metabolites or in fact creating haploid plants. So there are a variety of methods and divergent techniques which are present in plant tissue culture. We will discuss about different variants with the clarity. So as we discussed that explant is a small part of the plant which is used for creating or starting material for plant tissue culture. Now depending on what kind of explant you choose and how you treat, different variants of plant tissue culture are defined. Let us first start with considering somatic tissues. Somatic tissues might include different part of the plant like leaf, stem or any soft part uh, which is already differentiated. Let us take example of leaf which is being used as an explant. Now initially what happens, this leaf is sterilized and over a process of uh, plant tissue culture, this is turned into callus. Callus is a mass of undifferentiated cells which can undergo redifferentiation to form different type of tissues in the plant. So when we change the media, when we induce this callus with different type of plant hormones like a definite proportion of auxin and cytokinin, we can induce roots, we can induce shoots and then eventually we can develop this callus into new plants. This particular strategy of using somatic tissues and developing many plants out of it is defined as micropropagation. The name micropropagation has been given because you can choose small part of the plant and you can split that into small pieces and you can develop hundreds of plants from a small part or small explant. That's why it is known as micropropagation. In another strategy, instead of using somatic tissues, we can also use a specific type of tissue called meristem. So what we know about meristem, it is present in the apical parts, apical shoot or apical root, and it, it already has undifferentiated cells, which can directly be cultured and converted into new plants. So we do not have a requirement of turning a somatic tissue into callus to make a new plant, and therefore this strategy of plant tissue culture is defined as meristem culture. In yet another strategy, we can take the explant, probably again any somatic tissue, and then we can disintegrate that tissue into cells. This disintegration can be done with the help of enzymes or physical methods so that each of the cells are separated. And then we create a suspension of cells. Now this suspension of the cells can then be utilized for production of secondary metabolites in artificial conditions. Uh, various plant metabolites such as taxol, conine, and a lot of other metabolites which are pharmaceutically important are produced by this technique. So this technique is known as cell suspension culture. In yet another technology, the cell suspension can further be treated or the disintegrated tissues or cells can further be treated with some enzymes to remove the cell wall. As we know that plant cell wall is mostly made up of pectin, so we can use enzymes like pectinases to remove the cell wall and to soften the cells and a plant cell without cell wall is often named as protoplast. So this protoplast can also be treated in the similar way as cell suspension culture was done and this can be utilized for producing secondary metabolites. In fact, these things can be scaled up for large scale production and bioreactors may be used to generate large scale amount of secondary metabolites and also we can uh, use genetic engineering to manipulate both single cell suspension culture as well as protoplast culture to make desired product in the plant cell. If you are using protoplast, this technique is known as protoplast culture. 
Now another utilization of protoplast is to fuse these protoplast with protoplast of some other plants. Sometimes we have certain traits which are present in the cytoplasm by virtue of cytoplasmic inheritance like variegation of leaves or some ornamental traits. So if you want to take or make use of those ornamental traits, we can fuse two protoplasts together with different traits by using some kind of fusogens like polyethylene glycol and we can create new cells with new traits. And this kind of methodologies where we fuse two cells, uh, especially for utilizing the cytoplasmic traits is known as cytoplasmic hybrid culture. In one more strategy, we can again use the somatic tissues, but unlike the previous version where we talked about micropropagation and we developed large number of plants by small part of plant, it may not be very easy for transportation purpose because suppose we have a laboratory set up at one place in one region of the country and we want to transport those plants to other part of country, it is difficult and challenging. So rather than creating new plants, we can take this explant and we can induce development of artificial seeds uh, by means of again controlling the hormonal balance. In general, we can say high oxygen ratio is required to induce artificial seeds or somatic embryogenesis in the explant, whereas in micropropagation, we require low amount of auxins. Now, this generation of artificial seeds, this mechanism is known as somatic embryogenesis. And we can then take out these seeds and put it in the ground and we can sow them. So an advantage of creating these artificial seeds is that we can easily transport them, we can store them for the longer period of time. The idea behind developing these artificial seeds is based on encapsulation of these seeds into an inert matrix, which is generally prepared by using calcium chloride and sodium alginate solutions. So this whole capsid is created, whole cover is created by alginate solutions and inside those alginate solutions are small embryoids which are seed-like structures but there are subtle differences between uh, natural embryoids or seeds and somatic embryoids yet they can completely develop into new plants. So this is another strategy which is called somatic embryogenesis. In last strategy we can make use of some parts of the plant like pollen or anther. Now, importance of this pollen and anther is that they are haploid parts. Until now, whatever we have discussed was all diploid culture. But sometimes we can use pollen grains and we can turn those pollen grains either into artificial seeds or we can also induce callus into these pollens. So advantage of this kind of culture is to create haploid culture and this whole strategy is itself known as haploid culture technique. This is advantageous for creating pure breeds or pure lines. So these were all variants of plant tissue culture. Thank you very much.